Welcome to the video book summary of Partnership is the New Leadership by Ty Bennett. This book was published in 2016 and weighing 120 pages. Partnership is the New Leadership is the rallying cry for effective leadership in today's world. In the 1980s, Ken Blanchard changed the conversation from management to leadership and began to refocus, retool, and refine the approach to leadership. Our world has continued to change since then and at an even faster pace. To be relevant, influential, and successful today, partnership in leadership needs to be the approach. The book is available on Amazon with the link in the description if you like what you hear. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Partnership is the New Leadership. Chapter 1, Partnership is the New Leadership. Over a five-year period, I conducted a survey of more than 5,000 leaders. In this survey, I asked only one question. As a leader, what do you want from your people? More than 75% answered with one word response of commitment. People are not committed to their jobs and people are not committed to their companies. People are ultimately committed to people. It's a relationship that engages trust, respect, accountability, and commitment. The old adage said, leadership is based on title, position, or authority. But people don't follow titles, they follow people. Have you ever heard the saying, people join companies but leave bosses? It's the leadership they are committed to. That's why in today's world, partnership is the new leadership. The value you provide your people is what earns you the right to be heard and followed, not the title. In today's world, culture ultimately drives business and the leader's job is to create and maintain that culture. I believe what stops most leaders are themselves. We get in our own way. The three biggest stumbling blocks for leaders are these. Number one, self-interest. The leader who is willing to place other people's interests first, to think outward and to serve others, is the leader who makes the biggest impact. Leaders who want to make an impact have to be willing to give up their self-interest. And number two, ego. Ego makes a leader unteachable and unapproachable. Overconfidence is the problem of experts and leaders. Overconfidence can cause us to lose perspective. Humility, the art of being humble, is the antidote to overconfidence. And number three, apathy. Leaders can't be apathetic in their approach and only do what is required. John Maxwell perfectly stated, you can love people without leading them, but you cannot lead them without loving them. There are three distinct approach to leadership and each derives a different result. Number one, pretentious leaders create contempt. Pretentious leaders are driven by ego. Their focus is not on their people, it's on them. They choose style over function. And number two, position leaders create compliance. When leaders rely on position or authority, they are not only truly leading, people don't follow title, they follow people. And compliance will never take you where commitment can go. And three, partner leaders create commitment. Partner leaders understand that influence has to be earned. They build genuine relationships, add value, and join in collaborations with their people. What is partnership-based leadership? Number one, partnership-based leadership is the way you view your people. When you see your people as partners and not subordinates, it changes your approach to leadership. It's not about top-down directives, but rather open conversations and buying. Your people feel heard and they feel valued. And number two, partnership-based leadership is built on relationships. Partner leaders prioritize people over power, Partner leaders prioritize people over programs, and partner leaders prioritize people over policy, processes, and procedures. And three, partnership-based leadership is a balanced approach. Leaders need to place their people first. Empowering your people, allowing them to grow and succeed does not make you anything less. In fact, it makes you more of a leader. And number four, partnership-based leadership fosters natural accountability the leader to the people, and the people to the leader. Leadership is rooted in relationships, and when there is a positive relationship, accountability occurs naturally. The leader is accountable to the people, and the people are accountable to the leader. And number five, partnership-based leadership is driven by passion. Leaders who lack passion will f have followers who lack commitment. The speed of the leader is the speed of the pack. Passion means being willing to suffer for something that you love. And number six, partnership-based leadership is executed with empathy. Great leaders understand that they are in the people business. 
Empathy is the ability to mutually experience the thoughts, emotions, and direct experiences of others. Empathy as a state of mind breeds more listening, more understanding, and therefore more leadership. Partner leadership means emphasizing with the people by striving to understand not only where they're coming from, but also where they're going. And seven, partnership-based leadership creates transformation. Chapter two, partner leaders build genuine relationships. Five simple steps to building genuine relationships with your people. One, be with your people. The Marine Corps call this eyeball leadership, where officers take time to walk in lockstep with those they are training and experience exactly what they are experiencing. And two, get to know your people. Learn who they are, where they come from, where they want to go, what motivates them. Ask questions and listen. Focus on being interested, not interesting. And number three, love your people. Love for your people is the most important ingredient in the makeup of a leader. When people know that you care, that your concern is genuine, that you truly have their best interest at heart, they will respond with loyalty, trust, and commitment. And number four, serve your people. Dwight D. Ivansauer once famously said, you don't lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault, not leadership. A soft touch, a willingness to listen and help is much more preferable and effective. And number five, lead your people individually. You don't lead a group of people. You lead individual people who make up a group. That is why it's important for leaders to find individual time with their people. Time to have one-on-one conversation. Time to get to know their needs, fears, strengths, and goals. Time does not understand what drives each individual. And chapter three, partner leaders know that value precedes influence. Value precedes influence. In fact, it is the adding value that makes you influential. When you add value to someone's life, they want more from you. They want you around. They want to do business with you. They buy into you. The real golden rules of business is actually people do business with people they know, like, trust, and value. The idea that value precedes influence is the opposite mentality of the instant gratification. Give it to me now, world. Astute leaders understand that learning to focus on contribution and not achievement, on others and not yourself, provides the mindset to know the value precedes influence. 20 ways leaders add value. Number one, spend one-on-one time with your people. Number two, recognize publicly. Number three, compliment others sincerely. And four, when mistakes are made, be curious, not critical. Five, buy lunch. Six, give credit to the team. Seven, allow others opportunities to lead the meeting, give the presentation, take the lead or be in the limelight. And eight, know your people's names, hobbies, likes, etc. Nine, consistently be learning. And 10, share your knowledge. 11, connect people who could benefit each other. And 12, share books, articles that would be beneficial. And 13, be caring enough to have candid conversations. And 14, ask better questions. 15, write a handwritten note. And 16, support someone's project or initiative. And 17, listen more, talk less. 18, reach out just because. And 19, go out of your way to promote the agenda of others. And 20, remember birthdays. Three questions to ask yourself. Brendan Burchard proposed the three questions we should ask ourselves. Question one, is what I'm creating contributing distinct? Question two, is this the most excellent contribution? And question three, is there heart in here? Chapter four, partner leaders generate buy-in. A leader's vision is what creates buy-in. People support what they create. Remember that leaders don't create cultures for people. They create cultures with people. The true price of leadership is the willingness to place the needs of others above your own. Great leaders truly care about those they are privileged to lead and understand that the true cost of leadership privilege comes at the expense of self-interest. Let us all be the leaders we wish we had. Andrew Carnegie once said, No man will make a great leader who wants to do it all himself or get all the credit for doing it. Harry S. Truman said, It's amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. The commitment scale, the four Ds, distraction, decision, Discipline, devotion, distraction. People get distracted. It's a human thing. It's easier to seek the path of least resistance. 
Distractions are the comfort zone. Leaders understand that distractions are the enemy. Decision. The word decision in Latin means to cut off all other options. And discipline. Integrity is following through on a decision long after the emotions felt were making the decision have passed. I call that discipline. And devotion. The pinnacle of commitment scale is devotion. Eliminating distractions, making decisions, and ex- exercising diligent discipline are all important steps. But full commitment requires devotion. As the great tenor Luciani Pavarotti said, people think I'm disciplined. It's not discipline. It is devotion. There is a great difference. When you are devoted, you are driven by a cause. You are a person on a mission. You are not just excited about your decision. You are passionate about it. Devotion is felt internally, yet is externally obvious to everyone. Devotion is founded in purpose, and without it, full and complete commitment is not possible. Chapter 5. Partner Leaders Master Conversational Leadership. The ability to effectively communicate opens doors and establishes solid relationships. Don't talk at your people, talk with your people. Conversational leadership emphasizes keen attention, self-discipline, and a certain kind of artistry in engaging and communicating with others. The four eyes that make for effective communication, intimacy, interactivity, inclusion, and intentionality. When your people, your partners feel heard, valued and appreciated, they will reciprocate by listening and valuing what you share as well. Leaders today who choose to communicate conversationally know the importance of the three A's, accessibility, approachability, and authenticity. Communication is an art, and like any great art, it requires a delicate balance. There are three specific balances. Number one, care and candor. Two, conversational versus condescending. And three, curious versus critical. The word communication comes from the root word common. To truly communicate, we need to find what we have in common. When we stand on common ground, we are then in a position to understand, relate, and connect. As leaders, two important ways we can find commonality and make strong connections with our people are, number one, by not taking ourselves too seriously, and two, by learning to tell a good story. The power of laughter. Laughter is one of the most important parts of life, health, perspective, and leadership. Here are seven powerful things that laughter does to make life better. Number one, laughter dissolves distressing emotions. Number two, laughter helps you relax and recharge. And three, humor shifts perspective, allowing you to see situations in a more realistic, less threatening light. And four, laughter positively impacts health. And five, humor makes friends. Six, humor can ease embarrassing situations. And last, number seven, laughter protects the heart. Good humor truly is medicine to the soul. Storytelling. Stories are a great way to make a connection. People love stories. People relate to stories. Stories are engaging not only intellectually, but also emotionally. When we hear a good story, we automatically make a connection with the storyteller. As leaders, we need to learn to tell a good story. Chapter 6, partner leaders understand that motivation is important, but it's overrated. Whenever you have a goal, there are always two forces to consider. Motivating forces that drive us to achieve our goal, and opposing forces, obstacles and inhibitors that keep us away from our goal. Motivation is important, but it's overrated. The old adage said, great leaders are great motivators. In today's world, great leaders know that helping people do their job well is the ultimate motivation. And chapter 7, partner leaders recognize that culture eats strategy for lunch. Having a great strategy, product, or service is no longer a competitive advantage. Everyone is good. That's the entry fee. So what separates the greats? It's culture. Your culture will be your catalyst to outperform the competition and provide a type of service that creates loyalty. The old adage said that leadership is what drove business, but in today's world, culture drives business. Five mistakes that leaders often make that kill culture. They are, number one, hire for the wrong reasons. Two, focus on tasks and not purpose. Three, preach values that don't live. And four, incentivize the wrong activities. And five, not investing in your culture. Chapter eight, partner leaders create leaders, not followers. 
Ralph Lauder said, the function of leadership is to produce other leaders, not other followers. Simon Sinek observed, great companies and great leaders are ones able to succeed beyond any one leader and manage through the hard times. Individual investment in your people is a must if you want to develop leaders. Followers become leaders through mentorship. Key steps to empowering your people and building leaders, not followers. They are, number one, build relationships with key people. Number two, raise the vision of your people. And three, create systems for anything you will do more than once. And four, give them the opportunity to step up. And five, mentor individually. And six, reinforce we, not me. The old adage said, become a leader that is irreplaceable. In today's world, the real test of leadership is the ability to create leaders, not followers. Chapter 9, A Rallying Cry. The old adage said that leadership was based on title, position, and authority, but that's not true in today's world. Title does not give you the right to be heard, value does. In today's world, people don't want to be talked at, they want to be talked with. The ultimate goal of a partner leadership is to create more leaders. That is not only what today's world needs, but also what it demands. And that's a wrap on this amazing book, Partnership is the New Leadership by Ty Bennett. Look back on our channel for previous video book summaries and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, hashtag bestbookbits. Buy the book using the link in the video description to purchase from Amazon. To find out more about Ty, check out his website, tybennett.com. Thanks for watching, and if you learned a thing or two, give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching again, and have a great day.